Hey guys, this is a quick talk on section 6.5 on rational exponents. So a rational exponent is essentially just an exponent that's in the form of a fraction. And we can rewrite this as a radical. So whatever you see in the denominator of the exponent, that becomes the index. And whatever's in the numerator goes all the way on the outside. And the same relationship works in reverse as well. So if you have an index, uh, an index here and a number on the outside, you can rewrite this as a raised to the n over m. So again, the denominator of the rational exponent becomes the index on our radical. And similarly, the index on the radical becomes the denominator of the exponent, depending on which way, which direction we're, we're trying to go in. So a couple of examples. Here we have an index of 5 and a power of 3. So the 3 stays in the numerator, and the 5, that's the index, goes in the denominator. Here we have 1 over the 7th root of a to the 3rd. So this can be rewritten as a to the 3 over 7, but that would still be in the denominator. So when I move it to the top, and this is where properties of exponents will need to come in, you're going to have to review them from chapter four if you don't remember them. But whenever we move a term from the denominator to the numerator, the sign on the exponent changes. So this denominator would be rewritten as a to the three over seven. But when I move that term to the numerator, it'll become a to the negative three over seven. Similarly, here we have the sixth root of 3x all raised to the fifth power. So the 3x would stay inside parentheses, and then the 5 would become the numerator. The 6, which is the index, becomes the denominator. Here we have an, a, a similar example to what happened here. This would yield xy in parentheses raised to the 2 over 3. But when I move that term to the numerator, it's going to become negative 2 over 3. Now we can do the, the same exact thing that we just did, but in reverse. So you can have a to the 5 thirds and rewrite it as the cube root of a. So again, the denominator becomes the index. The numerator goes all the way on the outside. Here, the denominator will become the index. So it'll be the seventh root of 2mn. And then the numerator, which is 2, stays on the outside. If you have a negative exponent, first make it positive. So you can rewrite this as 1 over x to the negative 4 fifths. So we can rewrite this first as 1 over x to the 4 fifths. Now I can rewrite this denominator as the fifth root of x to the fourth. Fifth root of x to the fourth. Similarly here, if we have xy raised to the negative 2 over 9, the first thing we would want to do is rewrite this expression as 1 over xy raised to the 2 over 9th, then rewrite it as that. The 9 that's in the denominator would become the index. The 2 that's in the power would stay on the outside. And as a review from chapter 4, Hopefully you remember these rules. If not, here's a refresher. When bases are same and we're multiplying, we add the exponents. So when bases are same and we're multiplying, the new term has the sum of the powers. If we have the same terms and we're dividing, same bases and we're dividing the terms, we do top power minus the bottom power, m minus n. If we have a power raised to another power, then we multiply the two powers together. So m times n, m times n. If we have a product or a quotient raised to a power, then that power gets applied to each term. And this only happens, hopefully you remember, with a product or a quotient. If you have a sum or a difference, that is very, very, very massively illegal. That cannot be done ever. Hopefully you remember that uh, anything raised to the zeroth power is one. 
anything raised to the first power is always itself. It's not mentioned here, but that's another one of those properties you should remember. Also, if you have a raised to a negative exponent, you can rewrite it so that instead of it being on top, if we move it to the bottom, the sign on the power changes. And then the same thing here. If you have a to the negative m on the bottom, if we move it to the top, the sign on the negative m changes to positive m. And finally, this is really a combination of two different properties. If you have a negative m, one way to do this would be to apply that negative m to both exponents. So this would be a to the negative m over b to the negative m. Oops. Uh, too far. b to the negative m. Now, because we have negative exponents, I can switch them. So I can put b to the positive m on top and a to the positive m on the bottom. That's here. The other option that we can uh, use here is actually flip it first by using this property, that if we have a negative exponent, we should flip the fraction. So instead of a over b raised to the negative m, we could also rewrite this as b over a raised to the positive m. Now we can use this property where we have a quotient raised to a power and distribute the power to both these terms. So this would be b to the m over a to the m. So two ways to get to the same answer, but know that th that's what it's equal to. So here are a couple of questions on, on how to actually solve these things using these properties. The nice thing here is, uh, in fact, I wrote it at the very end. So let's go see that first. So it's very, very important that you remember that when you simplify with rational exponents, the same exact properties that we used in section 4.1 to deal with integer exponents, integer just means positive or negative whole numbers. So three, four, five, negative three, negative four, negative five, those types of numbers. Those rules are still the same. The properties are exactly the same. The only difference is now we have to follow our rules for fractions also. So earlier when we just had whole numbers, we would just add, subtract, multiply them. Now, when we add, subtract, or multiply fractions, we have to make sure that, they're, that we're basically adding and subtracting them when they have common denominators. So going back to where we were. Here, we have a to the 2 thirds times b to the 1 half times a to the 1 sixth times b to the 1 fifth. You can see that a to the 2 thirds and a to the 1 sixth have a same base and they're being multiplied. So we should add the exponents. Now, in order to add 2 thirds and 1 sixth, we have to have a common denominator. So I can multiply this fraction by 2 over 2. 2 times 2 would be 4. 3 times 2 would be 6. So it would turn into 4 over 6. And 1 over 6 I can keep as it is because I'm trying to get the denominators to be the same. And then I would do the same thing for the power of b. I have a 2 in the denominator. I have a 5 in the denominator. So I can multiply this fraction by 2 over 2. That would make a 10 in the bottom and get 2 over 10. This fraction I would multiply by 5 over 5 to get 5 over 10. Once the denominators are the same, I can simply add the numerators, or sorry, add the fractions because uh, the bases are same and the terms are being multiplied. And that's the exponent rule we have to use. So four plus one is five. That's where we get a raised to the five over six. For b, we add the numerators as well. Five plus two is seven. So we get b to the seven over 10. And that's our answer. Now, even though the question doesn't ask for it to be done, just as a review, I'm going to write it here. So if we were to rewrite a to the five over six with a radical, I would have the sixth root of a raised to the fifth. And then for b to the seven tenth, I would have the tenth root of b raised to the seventh. Again, the question doesn't ask you to, I'm just giving this to you in case uh, you know, you're wondering how that property is used. So here we have a product in the middle with a power on the outside. The rule here was 
that whenever you have a product raised to a power, you apply the power to each term. So M got, ra uh, M got applied to A, B, M got applied to B as well. Now here, we already have a power. So it means when we have a power raised to another power, we have to multiply them. So one third times three over four will be one fourth. That's what comes here. Two over five raised, uh, raised to the three over four would require us to multiply these two powers. So two over five times three over four, the two would cancel with the four on the bottom and get three over 10. So that's where the y raised to the three over 10 comes from. And that's it. There's nothing else to be done with this question. Question's over. And again, just as we did in the previous example to drive it home, if you wanted to rewrite this as a radical, you would write it as the fourth root of x. You don't have to write a power of one if that's the only thing left. And then for y, we would write the 10th root of y raised to the third power. It would not be wrong to do that, although unnecessary. So you can do that if you want to. This is a slightly more involved uh, example, so let's work through it. For the numerator, let's look at just that. In the numerator, we have an x and we have another x. The denominators for these two fractions are not the same. So I have to add 2 and I have to add 1 half. So I have to rewrite this as a denominator of 2. So I have to multiply it by 2 over 2. When I do that, I'm going to turn it into 4 over 2. I have a 2 thirds here and a 5 sixths here for powers of y. The denominators are not the same, so I can't add these two fractions. So I have to rewrite 2 over 3 as 4 over 6. I have to multiply this fraction by 2 over 2 to make the denominator the same. And that's exactly what was done here. Uh, the power of 2 over 3 got changed to 4 over 6. Everything else stays the same. Excuse me. And in the denominator, we didn't do anything. So all we've done going from here to here is just make the denominators the same. Now, oh, I guess I missed the step in the middle. Oops. Now what we can do is combine terms uh, using the properties of, law, uh, of exponents. So if bases are same, we can add the numerators. So 4 over 2 plus 1 over 2 would give us 5 over 2. So we have x raised to the 5 over 2. And for the y, we would have y to the 4 over 6 plus 5 over 6. That's 11 over 6. And I still have this 2 here, so I'm just going to write the 2 out front. That doesn't change anything. The denominator stays the same, x to the 7 over 2. But what we can do is recognize that anything raised to the 0th power is 1. So I can just write the 1 here. And that's exactly what was done in order to get us to here. Uh, wait, did I add things incorrectly? Oh, I'm sorry. 5 plus 4, it's not 6 plus 5, it's uh, 4 plus 5, so this should be 9. Don't have an eraser here. So this should be 9. So now we have 2x raised to the 5 halves times y to the 9 over 6, all over x to the 7 over 2, or 7 halves. Now we can see that because the bases are same and we're dividing, we have to subtract powers. The 2 has nothing to, uh, to do with the rest of the question, so it's just going to come along for the ride. There are no other y's, so that's going to come along for the ride as well. However, you can see that 9 over 6 can be simplified, so we can divide or reduce this fraction by 3, and that would give us 3 over 2. So that's what was done here. For the x's, we have to do top power minus the bottom power, 5 over 2 minus 7 over 2. This is negative 2 over 2, which is negative 1. So that's where this x to the negative 1 comes from. Now, if the question states rewrite or write all your answers with positive exponents, then this x to the negative 1 has to move to the denominator. Otherwise, you can leave this exactly as it is. 
ne this next one requires a couple of different types of rules. So here first, uh, instead of applying this negative one half power to this whole thing, we're better off simplifying the inside completely and then applying the power. So we have x to the one third, y to the two fifths on top. We have x to the four fifths and y to the negative three over two on the bottom. None of these denominators are the same. So first looking at the x's, uh, I can multiply this fraction by five over five and this by three over three to make the denominators the same. So one over three times five over five will give me five over 15. Four over five times three over three will give me 12 over 15. That's where the 12 over 15 comes from. For the y's, we can multiply two over five by two over two, because that's the denominator here. That will give us four over 10. And for the denominator, I would multiply top and bottom by five. So three times five would be 15. That's where the negative 15 comes in. And then five times two would be 10. Now you'll notice that the denominators are the same for the corresponding terms. What we can do at this stage is use the quotient rule or the quotient property and state that because we're dividing and the bases are the same, I can subtract powers, top power minus the bottom power. And then for the y, again, bases are same and we're dividing. So it's going to be top power minus the bottom power. So we have five over 12 minus 12, oops. We have five over 15 minus 12 over 15. This will be negative seven over 15. Five minus 12 is negative seven. So that's where the negative seven over 15 comes from. And for here, you want to be careful that there are two negatives here. So it really becomes a positive. Four plus 15 is 19. So that's where the 19 over 10 comes from. The 25 comes along for the ride. The nine comes along for the ride. I cannot simplify this fraction. It just stays as it is. Now we're ready to deal with the negative exponent. So what we can do is first of all, flip the fraction on the inside and make it positive. We did that right here. So if we flip the fraction, the power becomes positive. And then we can apply that power to each term. So that's exactly what we did here. We flipped this fraction upside down. The nine went to the top, the 25 X and the Y go to the bottom. And this sign on the outside goes from negative one half to positive one half. Now this exponent of one half gets applied to each term. So nine to the one half, 25 to the one half, x to the negative seven over 15 raised to the one half, y to the 19 over 10 raised to the one half. Now square root of nine is three. How do we know that this is the square root? Well, I can rewrite this as the square root of nine raised to the one. So nine to the one half when written as a radical is just square root of nine and square root of nine is three. By the same argument, 25 to the one half is the same as five because it's the square root of 25. And then when we raise powers to other powers, we would multiply them. So negative seven over 15 times one half gives me negative seven over 30 and 19 over 10 times half gives me 19 over 20. And that's our answer. Uh, the x to the negative 7 over 30 can move to the numerator to become x to the positive 7 over 30. The y to the 19 over 20 was positive power already, so it just stays in the denominator. We don't touch it. There's no need to move it unnecessarily. The 3, that's the square root of 9, stays in the numerator. The 25, that's the square root of 5, stays in the denominator. And that's it. Again, just a friendly reminder that the properties of exponents don't change between chapter four and chapter six. The properties of exponents apply regardless of what topic you're studying in mathematics. If you have any questions, as always, please feel free to reach out.